we are living in a time where people don't don't show up as themselves. And I just decided that I'm only gonna show up as me. And people like that. Tabitha, I feel like this is a layup question for you, given your spirit, your demeanor, but it's a question I ask every guest on this podcast, since it's called Jamel Hill is Unbothered. So let me ask you, when did you become unbothered? Oh, um, I became unbothered about, I think about four and a half years ago, uh, when I chose myself, right? When I chose to live my life for Tab. And I came and bothered with the rest of the world. And anything else that ain't got nothing to do with me, honey, ain't none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> so what, how did you arrive at that point that you needed to choose you? Because I think we all live with this automatic assumption that we think we're always choosing ourselves, but probably when we have more reflection, we realize we have not been choosing ourselves. So what made you realize that you needed to actively and intentionally choose you? Uh, I think, you know, when I got sick, right, I was sick for about a year and a half and the dark space, it ain't fun. Uh, but what it made me do is really look at myself. And I realized at that time, like I was putting myself after a whole lot of people. Right. Which is why I probably got sick, um, which is why my mental was not well. Uh, and I just knew I needed to change that. Right. And then also I just realized that I was also trying to be somebody who was not me. And that just wasn't fair to myself. And also to God, I was like, well, Lord, that's me telling him, you ain't do a good enough job. I got to create this other person and try to be her, you know? Um, and when I realized that, I was like, I'm going to start today and I'm going to spend the rest of my life every day pulling off the layers uh, to get, you know, make sure I'm always just showing up as me. And being what, what was the start of this when you decided to go vegan? Has it just been four years? Yeah, it'd be five years this year. And all of a sudden, oh. five years I've been vegan. Yeah, that's oh. when it started. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Because I, I, I honestly, I thought you were vegan a little bit longer, like six or seven years. Because it, you, it obviously is a lifestyle that suits you. Yeah, yeah, honey, changed my life and saved my life. Yeah. Um, so you, um, you mentioned being sick. You had a chronic condition where you had some fatigue, depression, um, some other things that were happening with your body. Sometimes some of us, we may feel some of these symptoms, but we don't always know how serious it is. So mm -hmm. was there something where you discovered or you knew that this was not just something that was passing? You know, the headache started in January of like 2016, right? I woke up and I, I had a car accident in high school. So sometimes I'll wake up and my neck is stiff or I have a little pain there because I live with chronic pain, right? And in the back of my head would you know, feel a little strained and that was normal for me. And so this morning, I, that morning I woke up, I felt that in my neck and I felt it in the back of my head, but it rested there. It never went away. Now, the most that I would have an episode sometimes could last a week. A week came and went, two weeks came and went, a month came and went. That pain stayed there for a year and seven months. And so, I mean, after a month or two, I was already going to, girl, you name it, I was trying to acupuncture, you know, going to the doctor, I was getting injections in my head, uh, injections in my spine, uh, taking steroids. I was doing anything and everything to try to get relief and nothing was helping. And then the pain that I was feeling here started to go throughout my body. I started to feel dizzy and I was still working at this time. I was working my little eight to five job. And I did that until probably like maybe June. Uh, I, you know, I was out of work for like maybe two weeks and then after I started to feel a little bit better because I would have like good days and bad days, but it, the presence was there. And I was like, this is not normal. There was a day I lost my vision today. Everything was blurred. Like I started to fall when I would walk. I really convinced myself too, because you know, the mind will convince you that you are about to die. And my mama died at ALS. And so I convinced myself that oh my God, this is, this, I have ALS, right? Uh, because I would start to fall and I had got injections in my spine. I had a cervical epidural. I had it more than once. And the last time that I got it, I lost all like, mo like mobility of my right hand. I couldn't hold my phone. I was tripping even more. And I was like, this is the same thing that happened to my mom. I really started convincing myself, which also let, you know, led me into panic. I started having major anxiety. My panic attacks just 
started going to manic panic. So it'd be like 50 a day sometimes. And it just was not a, you know, a good feeling, but uh, it definitely started. The change happened. Um, you know, the awakening of myself, like something is, is wrong. However, you know, the doctors never figured it out. They kept saying, well, we know it's something and we know it's like autoimmune, but we just can't figure it out. And uh, I think the last rheumatologist I went to, she told me, she said, um, well, you know, when we can't tell women, you know, what's wrong with them, we tell them they have fibromyalgia. I said, well, I don't want to just accept something because you can't figure it out. She's like, but that's, that's what we do. And so I was like, I'm not in good hands at this point. And so, yeah. but yeah. But it, it was your daughter who uh, showed you the documentary about, you know, how eating a lot of proteins, eating animals, essentially, how that can impact the body. Now, was your daughter vegan at this point? No, honey, she was just, you know, she was watching her mom suffer, right? And they watched it at school. And she came home and was like, mom, we saw this documentary. I think you should watch it. And I did. And it, you know, it was a light bulb moment for me. I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is something I haven't tried, right? I tried every drug, but I haven't tried to change what I'm eating because I wasn't an unhealthy eater, right? I haven't had red meat or pork since I was 15. And I was a vegetarian for like five years from 15 to 20. And then I started back eating chicken and fish and turkey when me and my husband, you know, moved in together. And so I only ate fish and turkey and chicken and I'm allergic to milk. So I didn't do dairy anymore anyway. So in my mind, I was a healthy eater, but I also realized I was not eating to feel well. I was eating to look well. And that was a problem, right? So, um, you know, it, it was a battle with food with me for a long time. Um, Explain that difference. You said eating to look well, not feel well. What's the difference? Because I was in, in my mind about my weight. I got to, you know, if I eat protein and, you know, a little bit of greens, I'm going to stay looking a certain way. I'm in, I'm in Hollywood. I'm in entertainment. I got to look a certain way, right? Because I wasn't free. I was living for everybody else. I was living to be accepted. And so I was eating or not eating some days, right? So if I got on, I would weigh myself probably... If I had an audition coming up or a shoot or something was coming up or I had an event and I wanted to look a certain way, I might weigh myself 10, 12 times in a day. And based on what that scale said is what I ate or did not eat, right? That's eating to look a certain way. Eating to feel well, eating to be well, you are intentional with what you're putting in your body, right? And so I started being intentional with eating things that are alive right? Plants and, you know, fruit and vegetables and trying to be what I ate alive and well. Um, a lot of times people say, you know, I never talk about this because I never want people to feel judged because I'm not that type of person um, and certainly not that type of vegan, right? But the vegan community can be very judgmental. But I remember when God revealed to me one day in prayer, he said, you always hear people say you are what you eat. And I ate chicken and, you know, turkey almost every day, right? And I thought about how these animals now are mass produced and they are not in good condition. They are heavily like in panic and depressed. And I was eating that every day. I was eating their panic. I was eating their depression. And in turn, I became panic and I became depressed. And also I was eating their death. And I also felt like I was going to die. And so I had to change that to where I don't eat those things. I don't eat uh, feelings other than my own. <laughs> and I want to feel good about tab. So, <laughs> so um, was it a slow transition or did you just go cold turkey and just drop? We started everything? with a 30, a 30 day vegan challenge. Right. So I, we watched the documentary. I was like, I told my husband, I was like, let's try it together for 30 days. And he was like, okay. You know, at that point, everybody is trying to help me get better, you know? And so in 30 days, the first 10 days, my headache went away after a year and seven months. And I was like, I'm on to something. And so I kept with it. So the 30 days turned into four years and how, how many months later? <laughs> well, and not, and not just four years, it turned into an incredible success story that I think it's important to remind people that was 20 years in the making. This was right. not Right. This I know people like to brand you as an overnight sensation, but you were not overnight. 
Um, you have been pouring a lot of yourself into becoming a success in the entertainment industry. And I want to just quickly go back to something you said. You talked about how you were living for everybody else and trying to um, meet a Hollywood standard. And I think maybe people who don't live in L.A., I live in L.A., I think you do too, is yeah. like what they don't understand that there's a difference between, say, thin and Hollywood thin. Yeah. Like, Hollywood thin is a, a totally different thing. Like they think thin is a zero or a two. Yeah. yeah. Right. We in our community, we might think a eight, a, maybe a six, yeah. but they right. think a totally different level. So um, yeah. what was that like for you to see or to experience, you know, in real time, how the standard was so different than probably how who you thought you were and how you lived your life? You know, it started so early for me. Right. Um, and I think it is even as far as like, you know, watching my mom as a little girl always struggle with her weight always gave me a thought about weight anyway. And so I remember when my daughter uh, was 12 because she was in sixth grade. I remember this like yesterday I was in her room and I was talking to her about something. And as I was walking out of her room, she had this mirror there. And I was like, Ugh. you know, I just started tearing myself apart in the mirror. And she was like, at 12, she looked at me, she said, mom, you know, if you do that in front of me that I'm gonna think something's wrong with my body. At 12, she told me that. And that was the last time I ever talked about any imperfection of my body in front of her. But it was an eye opening for me. Uh, but I was so damaged because of the standards. I remember going to, you know, casting workshops or, you know, auditions or hearing back that, oh, they think you were just a little bit too thick or, you know, you need to lose a little weight or how's your workout? You know, boldly asking these questions, right? I mean, I had friends or, you know, family members in the industry who would also be like, well, you know, if you want to be a leading lady, you got to have a certain look, you know, it, even for me straightening my hair, I would always wear my hair straight because they said my complexion, you can't be a natural girl with your complexion on television. You're going to have to wear it straight and be a two or a four. And I believe that. That was the sad part. I believed it, but I had been conditioned for so long to believe it, right? So um, it, I'm happy that I went through it though, because now I can stand on top of it, right? I can show up as tab, however I am. Uh, and also I have raised an amazing daughter who is like, girl, we're going to be exactly how we are, right? And, and proud about it. But uh it definitely is something that I see slowly is changing with the acceptance of us as us, uh, but still needs a lot of work. I was going to say, your daughter sounds like she didn't been here before. Yes. <laughs> as, they, as they say, yes. my gosh, yes. she's very wise. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you were um, trying to create this career in Hollywood, in entertainment, uh, stand up comedy, acting, um, I know you got a lot of rejection. Uh, were you ever close to really like quitting for good? Um, never quitting for good. I just, there's something that lives inside of me and always has uh, that would pull on me. There would, there would be times that I thought like, am I ever going, like, is it going to happen? But then something would remind me, whether it be a dream I had or a moment in a store where somebody would think that they knew me from television. And I'd be like, I ain't never been on TV. Like, I ain't never, like, what do you, like, no. Nah. But that'd be like God saying, hey, they see your destiny. So there was always something that would keep pulling me that I was open to receiving. I never wanted to quit. And it never really was about fame or anything for me. I just wanted to work and perform, right? I just love people and I love making people feel something. So I used to tell my husband, because you know, I used to work at Macy's and I was like, I was making like $15 an hour. I was like, if I could just do theater every day for $15 an hour, oh my God, I would just be so happy because then I'm, I'm an actress. I'm a paid actress, right? That's, that, that's how I felt. Um, so there was never a time that I thought never. Were there times that I was like, maybe I need to take a break. Maybe I need to rethink this. Maybe I you know, need to figure something else out. There were times where, because my husband's my partner, right? Not my provider, but my partner, that I thought I'm gonna have to take a break from this and just work so that I can make sure I'm helping him enough. 
you know, um, but there was never a time that I know that I could feel well about just quitting. When we lived in North Carolina, we had went back from living in California in 98, we was in Orange County, honey, nowhere near LA, honey, had no idea what I was doing. And so we moved back to Greensboro and we said, you know, we're going to go back to Greensboro, save up for one year because it's cheap and, you know, to live there. And then we'll move to LA. And then that one year turned into five years, right? And a baby and got married and had a house and cars and all these new responsibilities. And I had convinced myself that, girl, you can't have that dream now. As bad as I still wanted it, I convinced myself because I'm from a small town. You had a baby, you young, y'all married. Like, this is what it's going to be. You're going to have to live happily ever after, work a regular job, and that's going to be it. But God didn't let me do that. He ain't let me do that. I'm so grateful that, that he woke me up one morning. So, Because you originally, I think you moved to L.A. when you were like 19 years old? Yeah, so Orange County. To Orange County, sorry, not LA, because yeah. people yeah. not from here don't understand. Orange County is like a totally different universe. It's different yeah, it's a whole different place. But I didn't, I didn't know any better, right? My mama knew somebody uh, that she didn't really know, and they said, "Oh, she can rent a room for me," you know. And I was like, "Okay, yeah." I got there, and I'm like, "Now where is LA? Oh, this about almost." I mean, we were in Laguna, so we were very close to like San Diego. You know, we we was at the bottom, right? Well, it was way out there. <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong, it's beautiful, but it ain't Los Angeles and there's no opportunity there. Uh, so I wasn't able to, you know, I also was working two jobs at 19, right? I was working at this place called Onyx, which was a car financing company. And I was working at Express in the mall because, you know, one thing Tab can do is work and I ain't never been shame of it, okay? I can go get a job tomorrow. If all this go away, I can go get me a job tomorrow, okay? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was I was there, but girl, we won't in LA, we won't in Hollywood. <laughs> well, when you see how um, things have evolved for you, and you have one of the most organic, inspiring success stories that most people, certainly myself included, have ever heard about. You know, it all started with a sandwich in, a, in your Uber, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? And now here you are, a household name, millions of followers on social media. Uh, how often, oh, well, actually, before I ask this, let me ask you this. Does the success feel like you thought it would? Uh, you know, it feels like normal life now. It feels like, I, I always talk about this. My husband always joke about it. He was like, you know, for years and years, he's like for about 20 years, everything you booked, this was it. He was like, every time you booked it, you were like, man, this, this is the one right here. I'm about to blow up, about to blow up. And I would be like running through the house, excited and just going crazy, right? When all this stuff started to happen, and things started to move and doors started to open, I've been in a grateful spirit, but very much so like, this is, this is normal. Like it feels like now my spirit and my flesh are together. All those years with me going, oh my God, that was me, the flesh, like, oh my God, and flesh and my spirit was like, girl, no, that ain't it, that ain't it. So we weren't on one accord. Now I feel at perfect peace. Now I feel like, oh, oh, God, I get it. Now, this is where you wanted me to go. You, I had to start living in purpose first, right? It feels completely different than I thought it would feel, right? But it feels amazing, but it feels like home, if that makes sense. What did you think it was going to feel like? Um, you know, I thought it was just going to be like, oh, my God. Like, Lord, this is, you know, I, I don't know. I just thought. You know, I just thought it was going to be like super exciting, although it is super exciting for me. I mean, I love my life. Right. Um, but I'm also very much so it's family first. Right. It's tab and family first and everything else is just a bonus. Uh, and just being able to work. I'm happy with that. Like I get to work and do what I love. But I don't know if I thought there was a, a feeling attached to it more than I thought it looked a certain way if that makes sense. I think I thought it looked like I'm on TV every week or I'm, you know, I'm on a series regular television show. I'm, you know, and it's like, I never ever thought it would be a, a phone of like me recording myself that took me there, right? So uh, yeah, but you know, that's God. And he said, it's more than what we can imagine. Now, it, was it your daughter that first convinced you to start doing videos or did she specifically convince you to do TikTok first? Yeah, she, she convinced me to get on TikTok. I had already okay. been on 
Facebook uh, as my original platform. And then I had started sharing on Instagram, but I had been doing that for about two years. And so when she told me that I, I was doing well, I had like 500,000 followers on Facebook at the time. And I think I had like 200,000 on Instagram. And I was like, girl, I'm making my little money. I'm all right. You know, this is good. I didn't grew my audience. She was like, but no, mama, you can get on TikTok. And you could be like the TikTok mom and people would, you know, love your like inspirational videos. You could do your recipes. And I was like, girl, in one minute, I don't know. I, I talk slow and I talk a lot, girl. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, okay. She kept pressing me and kept pressing me. In March of 2020, I was like, let me get on here and see if I can do it. The first time we did a video though, we went viral for the wrong reason. I wanted to do the renegade because that's what was trending. And I said, well, let me show, show us how to do it. So it was me, her, and my brother. She was trying to show us how to do the, how to work TikTok so that we could do the renegade. And it was like when parents trying to get on TikTok, that went viral. I was like, okay, now people got to know that that ain't me. But I can also offer something. So let me do a, you know, a food video. And the rest is kind of history, girl. I, I did not think the kids would like me on there, but they, they showed up for me. And now you, as of the taping of this podcast, you have 4.9 million followers on TikTok. Why do you think you resonate so strongly with people? Um, I think that because, you know, we are living in a time where people don't, don't show up as themselves. And I just decided that I'm only going to show up as me. And people like that, right? People like to feel seen. And I do my best to make people feel like I see them. Um, and just by being tab, like, I don't know. I, I think that some people just need that. I also am so intentional with my videos. Like I want people to feel loved. Uh, I'm intentional with that. I want somebody to feel like I'm your friend. It's why I don't know if you ever noticed, but you know, I hold my phone very close to my face when I do my videos. You do. Because I want people to feel like I'm just talking to you, Jamel. It's just me and you in this time, right? Um, it ain't about nobody else in this moment. And so I'm just, you know, I, I think that's it. I can't tell you, you know, I just try to keep it real and honest. And um, my prayer every time I pick up my phone to record is God let them see you and me. And that way I can't be denied. And I think that it works. Uh, I don't know if you, I'm sure you probably have thought about it this way, but I certainly thought about it um just in not just researching you but just seeing your uh, career rise the way it has is that everything they told you wouldn't work for you totally works for you it totally right? works. the Girl. southern accent that supposedly wasn't supposed to work yeah um you know the natural hair that supposedly wasn't gonna work um you mentioned that sometimes you know you have body image issues that works for you right. so it, it's just i mean i think you know i i know that Everybody has a different belief system, but to me, that's how you know it's from God, right? Yeah. Is that everything he gave you totally worked for you. Yeah. And that's what I mean when I say, you know what? I was offending him by trying to be somebody else. Because that's like me saying, you ain't do, you know, you didn't create me right. But then when I started to embrace the way he created me, just as I am, my whole world changed. Um, because, you know, you and your husband, you, you guys have been together for years and years and years, right? Um, as this success was happening, I mean, he's seen you from, what, you guys met in like eighth grade, I think? Yeah, we met in eighth grade. Well, we you met, met in eighth, fifth grade, but we dated in eighth grade. You dated in eighth grade, okay, but met in fifth grade, right? So he has literally seen you through every stage, you yeah. know, of your life. Were you ever concerned or wondered how this wave of success might impact you two? Oh, no, honey, that's the one thing I'm certain about. Right? <laughs> Everything else I can be uncertain because I don't know what is to come with, with an uncharted territory. But I've been with my husband, it'd be 24 years in April, right? Honey, I'm, I'm certain about that man, okay? I'm for certain about our love. Um, our bond is so strong. And we've been changing every day for 24 years. So... Of course, we're both going to change as success happens. We're supposed to, but we change together. And I'm for certain about that. So, yeah, girl, that won't never the concern. 
<laughs> That's a word right there, Miss Tab. That's a word. Um, okay, look, I have a lot more to ask you about that. And it's a particular recipe that I want to ask you about that you made um, that I saw on your social media that I know I'm going to love this recipe. I just need to find out what kind of needle noodles you use. Because <laughs> I'm t I promise you I'm making it this week. Because when I saw okay. it, I was like, I will eat all of that. So I'll uh, ask you about that. Um, more about your husband. And of course, we got to talk about Donna. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more with Tabitha Brown. Uh, before we get back into you and your husband's relationship, which is so beautiful, and I love the couch conversations that you all have for Black uh, love. Uh, I know Cody and Tommy, too. They're yeah. like, yeah, they live in my neighborhood, basically. So, um, oh, okay, very good. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure this is getting picked back up before. Oh. Okay, you got it. Okay. Yeah, Tommy and Cody, they live uh, they live around the way here. So, um, I love them. And I love, of course, um, the just the Black love brand that they have built. But... Let's talk about Donna, <laughs> okay? Yeah, Donna is your Afro, great name, but what is the backstory behind the name? You, this is the truth, okay? Okay. A lot of people think it's something deep, but it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I was cooking live one night, and this one Donna was very short, and she had just started to grow out, and the top was standing up straight, and I was like, Lord, why is that one piece of hair standing up straight like Don King? I said, Lord, they must be related. I'm going to have to call her Donna. And that was it. That was it. <laughs> I've been trying to remember what I was making that night so I could find that video because it's on Facebook. The night that I named her. But I cannot remember. To, I mean, you know, we're talking 2017, 2018. But yeah, <laughs> yeah girl, that's a Don King cousin, okay? <laughs> now, uh, now, how does Donna's uh, personality, how does that... Um jibe with your own how did how, how are they related <laughs> honey she free okay she do what she want to do can't nobody tell her nothing okay and she also reminds me of that on the moments where i you know question myself in a moment she had to remind me girl tell you you free girl honey you are <laughs> so yeah i love her i love her that's funny. I was like, I gotta think of a name for my hair too. Like that just inspired me. I gotta think of something. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll come up with a name. Donna is like pretty good. Like that just seems like such a perfect name um, for the hairstyles that you have. Uh, you know, one thing I think that we were talking before the break about why people really are drawn to you and your authenticity is a big reason why I think you have so many people that follow you and root for you. And one thing I noticed about you is that you don't let people how they respond to you or even everything that you've been able to build change the essence of who you are that always comes through and for a lot of people who maybe didn't know you before um you know, the cooking videos and the TikTok presence and your appearances on ellen and the digital shows uh a lot of them became acquainted with you when you responded to wendy williams um mm -hmm. after she got out of pocket and started talking you know I, I appreciate this even more so. I haven't been married as long as you. I've only been married three years. So we're in year three right now. And one thing I have definitely learned, being a married woman, don't talk about other people's marriages. Like, really don't. Like, <laughs> that is just... Don't know, you don't know what they got going on. You don't know what they got going on. You don't know what's happening in somebody's house. Mind yeah. your business, as you like to say. However, yeah. the response you had to her went viral because I think some people were probably really surprised that you responded... responded with such kindness um uh what did you or why did you decide that that was the way to respond kindness empathy prayer even i think that's a, the only way to respond right with um negativity or um when people don't really know you right i always give people grace it's my first thought and intention and I honestly wouldn't even gonna respond. Like that morning went like this. I was sitting right here working and my phone started going off. And I was like, Lord, why are these people mess? I mean, it's like seven in the morning for me. And I look and people are like, girl, Wendy Williams is talking about you. I was like, oh my God, I didn't know she knew me. <laughs> and then I, they, somebody sent me the clip. I said, oh my, oh my God, oh, Lord. And I put my phone on back down and went back to working. I, literally, I was like, look, bless her heart. Like, she don't know me. I went back to work and it's like God said, 
this is the moment where you give this woman grace. And I said, well, I don't really care, right? And he was like, but it's not about you in this moment. And so I just, from my heart, did the video with no expectation that people would go crazy about it, right? But I think to your point, the reason that people went crazy about it is because no one had given her grace before. She's been fighting for a long time and I was not gonna show up to the fight. I was gonna show up to love her, right? And to pray for her. I still pray for her every day, especially these days because she's not well. And it's, it's heartbreaking to see people that way. When I say the pain you must be, you know, must be in like that pain, I, I can't even imagine how that must feel to be in that kind of pain and how it must feel for years to capitalize on other people's pain or downfall or create that and have to live with that inside. That's heavy, right? And so I just thought, well, this woman needs grace in this moment. And to know that somebody sees her in this moment without negativity, but also to let her know that mind your business next time, you know? And don't, don't put out things that way, right? Uh, but that's really it. Like my intention every day is to love. I choose it intentionally. Every day I'm like, I wake up and I want people to feel loved. I think that's our purpose. Like we all were born with a heart for that reason, to love. Liking people is different. We all love by default. It's natural for us to love. It ain't natural to like. And so it was just real and intentional. So I guess that is sort of a big example of how you might respond if somebody, you know, is trying you, right? Are you always able to exercise that? Because <laughs> I can't imagine you mad, but I imagine you might have some moments. I always tell people, unless you live in this house, you probably will never see me mad, right? Because you don't know me well enough to ruffle my feathers. The person who can get me, honey, going is my husband. And he'd be, I'd be like, you want me to kill you, don't you? You want me to. <laughs> But even at this stage of my life, it just takes so much. I mean, we can't even stay mad. We can't even argue good no more. We, we both get tickled. Like we was having a spat this morning on oh, something so dumb, but I, I had it in my mind. I'm gonna have an attitude with you today. He like, he know, he be like, oh, you gonna be mad at me today, huh? Like, and now I'm laughing, right? So it's like, it, it takes too much out of me. It's exhausting to be upset, right? But to be happy and to be joyful gives you energy, right? So I need all the energy I can get. I, don't, I got a lot to do. I ain't got time to be walking around holding grudges, being mad and frowned up. And also, honey, I like my skin. I, you know, when you be frowning, it be taking, you, all this get to go. I don't want to do the Botox stuff that the folks, I ain't ready for that life yet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep it smooth as long as I can. Well, it was, um, you know, it, it was interesting because originally what touched off, you know, I, uh, Wendy Williams's response was about you saying that you wanted or have already retired your husband, which I thought was so beautiful. But yet women who are in your position, who are high profile, people assume, you know, you're the high earner and all this other stuff. And like to get into your business based on what they see, um, it's, it's almost like. Uh, people want to, because I go through the same thing, you know, being my husband is obviously not as high profile as me. And so people have all these perceptions about what our interaction must be like, like, oh, you only with her because ESPN used to pay her this and all this kind of stuff. So I know you certainly don't live by other people's negative perceptions, but nevertheless, does that ever get annoying? Because sometimes for me, that gets very annoying. And I never want my husband to feel emasculated. But part of the reason why he's my husband is because he's very secure in right. this situation. So how do you deal, I guess, with all of that part? Well, I've been telling people this, and this is the God honest truth. I know people don't believe it, but girl, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I don't spend time on it, right? Because I think that's where you get, where it gets annoying because you spent time on it. It ain't my business what somebody else thinks. I know my truth. I know my husband's truth. I know our truth and our circumstances together. People don't know it. So, which is why I wasn't going to respond that day because I was like, well, she don't know us, so it don't matter. But then I did. But so many people, girl, people going to always have something to say about us. They're going to always have something to say about you to the day we out of here. And even when we gone, honey, they're going to still have something to say. Let them say it. Honey, wish them well, right? It ain't my business. And, I, and as long as me and my husband is right here, that's all that matter to me. Well, as I mentioned, he's seen you through every stage, but it's, it's vice versa. You've seen him through every stage. Yeah. So what are you sort of, and this is not to suggest he's not done evolving, but what's the, what's the most proudest you are of seeing like how, of seeing the man that he's become? Like what makes you most proud seeing how, how, how he's gone from the fifth grader you knew yeah. to now being uh, this man next to you? Oh, honey, listen, you know, he's a coach now. He started his nonprofit, uh, Team Chance Basketball. And when he is in his element with those kids, I'd be like, I'm so glad that you got fixed, honey, because we might have about two, three more babies because that thing is so, <laughs> it's so attractive on them. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> I'd be like, ooh, that man is fine. But um, I just, I love to see him poor, right? Because I know how he grew up and I know the people he needed in his life that he didn't have. And he works really hard every day trying to be that for other kids. And it, he's so passionate about it. And to wake up and let that drive him, it's amazing. It's amazing to see. I'm so proud of him. So, and he just beginning. That's the other thing that excites me is that he just getting started. He mm -hmm. just getting started. So I, I'm excited about what God is going to do in his life. Yeah. But you guys, as I, as I mentioned, you guys host couple conversations uh, through the Black Love series. Mm -hmm. So um, might should we expect that you two will be doing more? Because I, I mean, I think you guys are really good at it. So oh. will we see more of, of, of Dab and Chance? Will we see this? Girl, I don't, I mean, you know, you're going to have to ask Cody. Go over there and knock on the door and ask <laughs> if you going to come back. Well, may, well, maybe not specically with Black Love, but, you know, listen, Nicole, Ari Parker, and Boris Kojo work together all the time. I'm just saying. Well, you know, well, you know we do our own thing on Fridays. It's Fridays right. with Tab and Chance. And so we've both been so busy. We haven't been able to do it as consistent as we like to. But the goal this year is to make that even bigger. So absolutely. Absolutely. So how, how does he like the media spotlight or being he, out front? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he's slowly catching on. He's slowly embracing. You know, people who followed me very early on, uh, when I used to cook live in my kitchen, they never saw his face. They would only hear his voice. And all you would hear was him saying, man, you got them people looking in our house again, man. They looking in our kitchen. I'd be like, hey, I got to do this. The Lord has told me to do these videos. He'd be like, man, I don't like all these people looking in our house like that. Now he'd be like, hey, babe, you ain't did no video in a while. You need to go on there and do that video. <laughs> That's right, holding you accountable. But it's so funny, last night, uh, yesterday, Black Love posted like a reel on Instagram and it's of him talking. And he was he was watching him sit on the couch. He said, hey, babe, you saw this? And I was like, yeah, I saw it. He was like, man, I, shoot, I was all right on that. <laughs> so he, he started, he started to get, get, you know, get his feet wet and get comfortable. So he's starting to enjoy it. Um, at his own pace, you know, it's gotta be his own pace. That's great, cause my I swear my, my husband is an extrovert. So sometimes I'm gonna be like, give me the mic. The thing okay. <laughs> no, it it takes him a while to warm up and get comfy. <laughs> um, as you look at uh, sort of this next phase of of what you want to do with your your career, because you've already probably checked off a lot of goals and maybe even some you didn't even know were there or would be there. Um, what does this next phase for you look like? You know, I used to do a show called Very Good Mondays mm -hmm. and I highlight small businesses and doing that just always felt so good to help people. Uh, I want to get back into more helping people uh, using my platform to where I can make other people's dreams come true. And so, you know, my prayer has been because uh, God has been revealing this to me and I'm like, well, Lord, when? Because I want to make sure I do it on his time uh, is a talk show. So 
we're going to see, you know, if that is in the master's plan, and then that's what it'll be. And then, of course, I still want to do movies. I still love to perform. I'm uh, working on developing a show. I'm about to shoot my uh, first show with Ooh Network. I'm super excited about that. I made their hot list to, to watch this year. Um, and I'm, you know, finishing my cookbook, and that'll be out this year. But most importantly, I just really want to, you know, keep pouring into people. You know, my children's show, Tab Time, is doing really well. I would love to continue that and maybe tour it. And, you know, how when we were little and my nephew was little, I remember Barney used to go on tour and it would be a thing where kids would go. Um, but just keep doing things that make people feel well and change the narrative of how we see Black women uh, in powers of positions. Um, and, you know, show up with my with me and Donna, honey, being free and in charge and spreading love and positivity. But that's it. You know, I don't really have like exact things. Of, you know, I'm working on a lot of things, but I never think too far because God just keeps blowing my mind. He was like, that's great. I like your plans, but let me show you something. Sit back and let me show you something real quick. And I'm all right with that. Yeah, yeah, I did read about you working on a, a sitcom that's kind of based on your life. I mean, it is based on your life, right? Yeah, I was working on that, but I'm not anymore. Mm. So um, it wasn't time for it. You know, I've been offered so many things that I, after praying about it and sitting with it, I, God said no. And I said, you know what? I can't do it. I only do things that he tells me to move forward on. And so, and listen, people can love it or hate it, but that's going <laughs> to be sad, honey. And I cannot be moved. Well, you always have been very good and candid about, you know, sharing how God has gifted you with certain visions and manifestations and ideas. How did you learn um, as somebody who is a believer to accept the vision that he was showing you? Oh, honey, it's, my whole life has been that, right? And he has shown me things and it's been confirmed so many times. I'd be a fool not to believe. <laughs> So it's just how it is, you know. Um, I, can't, I can't think of a time when I did not believe in what he showed me, right? Um, it's my gift, right? It's my gift and I see things, I hear things, I dream things, and I feel things. And all of those are our gift. I always tell people, everybody got, you know, some people are like, I don't have that gift, I don't have that kind of gift. I'm like, everybody got that gut though, right? You know how you have that gut feeling? I call it the gift under the tummy. So you, everybody got a gift. And so sometimes it just shows up in different ways and we, we have to make our decision on how we choose to believe them. Were you ever reluctant to share your spiritual journey with people? Girl, yeah, girl, I was, honey, I, for a long time, I was scared that people would think I was crazy, you know, because I have gifts that will blow people's minds right? And scare people away. I've had people not want to talk to me anymore because I had to tell them things about their life. Um, and so for a while, I prayed it away. Like, God, please take this from me. I don't want the responsibility. But now I know, you know what? It's who I am. And so I'm never shy about it. And I am very vocal. People know, honey, that me and the Lord is best friends. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell people, you know, I grew up in the church, but I'm not, I'm not uh, religious, Right. I don't believe in religion. I believe religion causes separation, but I, I get caught up in my relationship with the Lord. Right. And so um, I always tell people, you ain't got to go to God all holy. Like, oh, Lord, we come to you now. No, you could talk to him the same way I'm talking to you. Like, Lord, let me talk to you for a second, because I don't know what's going on in this moment. That's how I be praying. Be like, OK, Tab, sit on down. Let me let me talk to you. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you mentioned all the projects that you're working on. Um, one project that you already have worked on is The Shy yeah. as Octavia. Uh, how did that role come about? Oh, Lena, who I love, uh, that's my sister. Um, she thought of me, she saw me, and she had known that I was an actress before, you know, people discovered me on the internet. And so she was like, I got a project, you know, you know, a, a role for you on the show. And I thought, honestly, when she told me that, it was gonna be like me cooking some food or something, you know, one episode. But when she sent it over, I was like, oh, my God, I cried. I was like, you know, I've been waiting on a moment like that for over 20 years. And uh, to play Octavia with the role, you know, this character who is this woman that so many women identify with. Right. I have so many close girlfriends 
um, who have, you know, fertility issues or not been able to have babies or failed adoption, so many different things. Uh, and to represent that, it was so special to me to be trusted with that. So, but it was, it was an amazing experience. All right, well, Tabitha, before I get you out of here, there's a game that I play with all my guests. So you are the next contestant. <laughs> um, it is very simple. I give you two choices. You have to pick one. Okay. Okay. And you're so nice. And I hate to have to badger you during this part of the interview, but okay. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so I know about your love. Um, and by the way, the game is called this or that very simple. Um, I know of your love for the Cosby show. So uh, Rudy or Olivia? Rudy. <laughs> you wanted to be one of Rudy's girls. Like that was. And I tried to be her friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, you didn't even see yourself as a, uh, I guess, becoming like a Rudy. You were like, no, I just want to be one of her friends that opens the door. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I just want to be another actor on the show. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Which was actually a very good goal because you see the number of actors who have come in that you'll be watching the Cosby show. You're like, wait, I didn't know Adam Sandler used to be on the show. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep, yeah, exactly. Uh, working at Macy's at Century City or driving an Uber? Driving Uber. <laughs> Were you, um, uh, did you, do you have any, I guess, memorable Uber stories to share at all? I love driving Uber because I love talking to people, right? Mm. Uh, but I, I, in my mind, I thought I was going to get discovered. I told my husband, I'm about to get discovered in my car because I'm going to meet a director or a producer or somebody. I'm going to be, you know. I mean, but it, it kind of happened though. It just didn't happen the way you thought. Right. It did happen. I did get discovered in my car. It just, you know, I would talk to every person. I'm like, hey, so what you do? Oh, are you, are you a nurse? Let me go and get you to work. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, you're not a producer? Okay. But um, I just loved it. I had people in my car who would cry. I had people in my car who would laugh for the first time in a long time. Um, I just always have had a gift where people feel safe to share. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a little counseling session for me. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, mushrooms or tomatoes? Mushrooms. Speaking of mushrooms, so you made a garlic kale mushroom pasta. Ooh, that is so good. Might make uh, it tonight. <laughs> I love all those elements. I need to know what kind of pasta was it that you used? Uh, angel hair pasta. It was angel hair. Okay. Was it like whole wheat, just regular angel hair? Um, angel hair? It might have been chickpea. Chickpea. Yeah. Chickpea angel hair. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll use regular because regular uh, angel hair is already vegan as well. Oh, yeah. Didn't know that. Yeah. See, I'm on that recipe this week because oh it looked God. phenomenal. It's so good. It's a favorite. Uh, veggie, veggies wrapped in rice paper or avocado toast? Oh, avocado toast. <laughs> See, I can't get there. And I like avocados. I cannot get there. You ain't never had, you don't like avocado toast. I like avocados. I'm not a huge bread person, but I see how this could go together, right? But you got to toast the bread, get the super thin Dave's killer bread, okay? Okay. Toast it, put this, spread the avocado on while the bread is still hot, so going like butter, okay? But you got to add a dill pickle. You like mm -hmm. onion? I love it, and I love pickles. Add your dill pickle, a little red onion, some arugula, drizzle a little olive oil and some sea salt and pepper, maybe a little tomato if that's your business, and eat good. It's like a half of a sandwich, but it's so good. The pickle uh, changes everything. Oh, see, I, I love pickles. Um, because you do so many creative and great things for, with vegetables. So my husband hates vegetables. He's one of those people that is like, you only need food for fuel, which I think is crazy. I'm like, he can eat the same thing every day. And be, he just eating for, for what it's going to do for the body. Yes. yes. I mean, and he's in great shape. You know, I, listen, I love looking at the six pack. Trust okay. me. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm just like, there's got to be, he was like, vegetables just aren't tasty. Anything or is there a recipe you would suggest that I do that I could get him to actually like them, <laughs> like vegetables as more than just fuel? Does he like spaghetti? He does. So take, you know, if you were using like a, a vegan meat, right? Like Beyond Meat, for example. Mm -hmm. But then you take your uh, zucchini, mushrooms, green bell pepper, uh, onion, and then and garlic, and you blend it all up in a blender. So that mm -hmm. it's chopped up thin, just like your meat. Mm -hmm. And then you saute it all together, honey. He ain't gonna know the difference. He gonna be like, this is good. And he ate a whole thing of this. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. and my son don't be liking veggies either some days, but he'll eat that spaghetti. <laughs> By the way, I'm convinced that Black people truly invented the 
goodness of the combination of bell pepper and onion. I don't oh. think a, there's not much we don't make with, that doesn't involve bell peppers and onions. Right. And then when you're feeling fancy, you use a yellow or a red bell pepper. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Get that color up in there. They don't know about that. Like, look how pretty it looks. Yeah, they look. <laughs> exactly. And they're so good. Uh, they are. I, I love some bell bell peppers. I, I'm a, I like vegetables, so um, I wouldn't. But I also do like meat. I'm not <laughs> not necessarily red meat as much. Yeah, that's your business. Yes, that's, I got you. I didn't feel like you were judging me at all. <laughs> not at all. And I and I definitely understood what you're saying. All right. Finally, of uh, the Tabitha catchphrases, have a good day. But if you can't, don't go out messing up somebody else's day. Or that's your business. Oh. Girl, girl, girl. I'm gonna have to go with that's your business. Mm. I'm gonna have to do that. Um, Cause I think you can tie it into making it a good thing, right? Uh, to close out your day, you know, both of them are about your business. They have a good day, but if you can't, don't go messing up nobody else's, that's your business, <laughs> right? But I, I say that's your business because our life is our business. And if you don't take care of it, you can go out of business. So it's, that's your business for me. Did you ever think about making that the title of your memoir? What, that's your business? Yeah. Um, you know what? It could be. Because, you yeah. know, my book is Feeding the Soul because it's my book. Right. Correct. It, it definitely yeah. be. You, you never know, girl. <laughs> well, and I also think um, a, a idea, feel free to steal if you haven't thought of it already that um, uh, uh, Y'all Are Right is also, I think, a good way to open up, uh, to be a book or something, a podcast title. Like, Y'all Are Right fits you so good because that's how you literally open up talking to people. Yeah, I, people always say that too. You know, yeah. I go out and do events. I always say, you know, hello there, Y'all Are Right. Cause <laughs> <laughs> I know. If you once that talk show happens, and I truly believe it will happen because you are built for a talk show, you gotta open the show up with that every day. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And we close every day with the going about your business, all right? There you go. I'm, see, bam. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes I love it when a plan comes together. Well, Tabitha, thank you so much for joining me and giving me a little bit of your time. Um, you're just such an amazing person. Like you just, I, I don't even know you that well, but I just, I, I, I so get it. You just have a glow about you. And I think just, it just draws people in. So you, you are not lying. You have a gift, a true gift. And not a lot of people in this business um, actually have that gift. Some try to fake that gift, but people know when it's the real deal. So I know that you are just scratching the surface despite how su successful you already have been. So thank you for spending this time. Thank you for that. I appreciate you, hun. Thank you so much. Honey, and listen, my husband is a fan. He has been. He ain't here right now. He had to take my son to tutoring. But for many years, honey, we would see you at night <laughs> trying to go to bed and I hear your voice and see you on the TV. So uh, keep doing what you do. You're just amazing, hun. I appreciate it. Well, please you. give him my best. And I know uh, coaching and, and especially coaching kids, you look... Unfortunately, we've seen so many bad examples of youth coaches in terms of their behavior. So it's great to know that there's somebody out there really kind of shaping, um, shaping the future. And sports is so important to the development of young people. Obviously, I'm a, yes. I'm a big proponent of that. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's so important. So I will yeah. let him know. Thank you for that. All right. Take care, Tabitha. Appreciate right. you.